What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and since I started here on YouTube I've made like 600 daily videos, countless travel films, I've tested almost every single camera on the market and I understand that finding a vlogging camera can be super difficult. So today I've curated all of my favorite vlogging cameras in one place to walk you through them and help you finally decide what is the best vlogging camera of 2018. Okay, so you wanna know what the best vlogging camera of 2018 is, but first we gotta define the type of vlogs you wanna create. Basically, it comes down to the vlog you wanna create. Will it be mostly you or other people talking, or do you have a real passion for creating cinematic sequences and using drones and kind of creating a visual little film that's also a vlog? Now, no matter what answer you had, it's actually going to dramatically change the type of vlogging camera that is perfect for you. I've pretty much used every single camera on the market with a few exceptions and there's a few that I really believe are great vlogging cameras. So what I want to do is show you like the five or six vlogging setups that I use, tell you the goods, the bads about them, ultimately why I use them, and then also why I think they might be the perfect tool you're looking for. However, I do mostly shoot on Canon, but there are actually a lot of Sony cameras thrown in here as well. So it's kind of like a mixed bag of, of gear. Okay, so let's say you want to start creating vlogs that are mostly you or someone else talking to camera. Good examples of this are like Joey Graceffa, uh, Pointless Blog, even like an Alex Wasabi or like early Logan Paul. Well, there's actually three camera setups that I would recommend for this type of use. You're gonna laugh, but the first one is right in your pocket, a, a, a smartphone. But, but in 100% honesty, an iPhone is the easiest way to get the most natural reactions out of yourself and everyone around you when it comes to vlogging. Like, not to mention that it shoots slow motion, it shoots 4K, it shoots time lapses, it, it does everything most of the cameras in this lineup can't do. But the really important thing is it's always with you and it's usually charged. But let's say you're looking for a little bit more production value, you wanna step into the world of cameras and you just don't really wanna use your phone to vlog. Well, I would recommend the Canon G7X Mark II or the Sony RX100 Mark V. Now the Canon is super reliable, has great battery life, and is a steal for only $650. But it also has a built-in time-lapse mode, can shoot 60 frames a second in 1080, and the footage always comes out exactly like you'd expect it to. It's so reliable, it's just reliable. But if you can spend the extra $300, the Sony RX100 Mark V is so much better it would make Canon users cry. It's literally the exact same shape and size as the G7X, but it shoots 240 frames slow motion, it shoots 4K video, it has an electronic viewfinder, it has image stabilization, and it has a lightning fast autofocus and Zeiss lens to just kick it out of the park. Now, honestly, for like a point and shoot camera, I have never seen anything even come close to the RX100 Mark V. Again, I apologize, I don't have one here to actually show you, but it literally looks just like this, except it says Sony. Now, let's say you wanna do more than just talk to camera and you actually wanna start crafting your story so you can show your audience rather than just tell them. For this example, we'll use someone like Casey Neistat's content. It's not overtly crazy production value, but the story's there, everything works, the bells and whistles. It's just a very happy medium of production value and also professional level gear. Now, in order to be able to get certain shots to lead your audience on this journey, you're gonna want the ability to switch lenses, to shoot in manual modes, and to just kind of overall have a little bit more control over your footage. Now, this category isn't for the travel filmmakers or the photography lovers or the crazy slow motion numbers. This is more of a normal category for the upper level of vlogging. Now for years, this category was actually dominated by this setup. This is the Canon 70D with the Gorillapod wide angle lens and Rode mic. Also, you can use a Canon 80D. It's the KC Neistat setup. This is the vlogging setup. Now this is actually for very good reason because the 70D that I have right here has a ton of features that actually make vlogging a lot easier. Most notably, this flip out screen right here is incredible. And it's actually something that you're gonna see most of the cameras in this review are lacking. Having a screen so that you can find cool framings and see what you're actually looking at is crucial when you are in front of the camera. It's the entire difference of going, check out this car here, or check out this car here, and you point to some lady's butt in line, you know? The camera also has like an incredibly fast, reliable autofocus, but the biggest part about it is it can take a beating. Now, unfortunately, Canon put the microphone of this camera on the side, so you will need to plop a huge, ridiculous looking microphone on top of it to get usable audio, especially if it's windy. 
And honestly, nothing makes random people more nervous than shoving a camera in their face with a ridiculous microphone on top of it. It's just basically like being like, you wanna say that on record? The Canon 70D has pretty much gone unchallenged in the vlogging world for like the last three or four years because every single camera that came out that was better than this did not have that flip out screen. Even Sony missed the mark on a full frame camera with a flip out screen. That is until the brand new Canon 6D Mark II came out and guess what it's got. It is finally a full frame camera with a 26 megapixel image sensor with a flip out screen, built in time lapse mode, the ability to shoot 60 frames in 1080. And now that it's full frame, it can take the entire line of Canon L series lenses. But somehow Canon forgot the ability to make it shoot 4K. What the? because it's 2018 and my iPhone can, but for some reason this massive thing cannot. Way to go, Canon. You almost surprised me for a second. Now to all the professional photographers or vloggers that already own Canon L series lenses, this is really, really exciting news. But if you're just starting out vlogging and you're not bringing in income and you can't afford the most expensive gear, be very cautious when trying to switch to a full frame camera such as this one, because the lenses go from a couple hundred dollars each to a couple thousand dollars each. So even though I give tons of praise to the 6D, the 7DD might actually still be the camera for you. Okay, so finally we've come to my favorite category, travel vlogging and photographic filmmaking, I'll call it. This is essentially like the Sam Colders, the Taylor Cuts, the Devin Super Tramps, the Peter McKinnons, and a ton of the videos that I make. So this might mean you're traveling to some of the most beautiful locations in the world, shooting for brands or whatever it is, you're looking to capture the world as cinematically as possible. If you're in social media and your job title is everything, your camera also needs to be able to do everything. There's like four cameras in this category, so I'm gonna start very small and then just build up. First up is the GoPro Hero 6. Now, vlogging on a GoPro is definitely a look. Although I'm not the biggest fan of vlogging on a GoPro, this can actually be the perfect tool for the traveling filmmaker that doesn't wanna be weighed down by excess gear or for the filmmaker who really wants to focus on the actual experience of being there. GoPro has a lot of little quirks to get used to. It randomly shuts off, the audio kind of sucks, and you can hear your hands always moving around on the mount. I've actually found a way around this, but I plan on making a whole series of how to vlog on each camera I recommend, so I'll save it for that. But what GoPro lacks in audio, it makes up for in frame rates, different resolutions, its ability to literally go anywhere and do anything and to also capture raw photos. Definitely something to think about the next time you go traveling, but if you're going to attempt to vlog on a GoPro, GoPro, make sure you bring tons of batteries and even more mounts. But most importantly, remember to have fun and be extra creative because again, that is why you're using a GoPro in the first place. The next step up in the travel vlogging world, we actually already talked about, it goes to the Sony RX100 Mark V again. Now I've already said all this, but the ability to have slow motion, time lapse, an electronic viewfinder, a flip out screen, raw photos, all in something that can fit in your pocket is pretty much just like unheard of. And then honestly, the Canon 6D could have been a great contender for this category category, but Canon's ability to not give us 120 frames a second in slow motion was the big deciding factor for me. I love slow motion, and even though this shoots 60, there is a massive difference between 60 frames and 120 frames. So speaking about 120 frames a second and all out sexiness brings us to the big boy of vlogging cameras, the 1DX Mark II. Now, a lot of people think I'm just straight out crazy for vlogging on a 1DX Mark II, but so does Devin Supertramp, Peter McKinnon, MKBHD. Last week we were chatting about it. This is a very, very capable camera. And I said this in my last review, but once you start putting microphones on other cameras, it's essentially the exact same size as a 1DX. And although Peter McKinnon might disagree with me, Canon put the microphone in the front on the 1DX. So the audio I've been using on it is always perfectly clear and, and I've never found a need to throw a microphone on top of this. Now, I can really only talk for the 1DX Mark II because it's what I primarily use, but everything I say for this camera pretty much also goes for the Sony A9 and Sony A7R III, as long as you're using Sony lenses with them. 
I actually did a full comparison of the 1DX Mark II and the A7R 3 right here. If you want to go check it out, just click that and then you'll know what I'm talking about. But when I think about vlogging, I think about just saying enough to camera to be able to get me to that next really cool cinematic montage. In all honesty, the, the photography missions and drone shots and montages are the entire reason that I loved doing daily vlogs. My daily vlogs ended up just being a daily journal of me chasing cool shots around the world. See, I love slow motion and it's gotta be 120 frames or more to keep me happy. And the 1DX does slow motion flawlessly. Also, since the 1DX is naturally so good at exposing images, I didn't really feel a huge need for a flip out screen to see what I was shooting. It would have been very nice to help with my framing, but the 1DX's autofocus is literally picture perfect. And it has the ability to shoot at like 25,000 ISO without any grain. So even shooting at night is a piece of cake. And the Sony equivalents to this camera might actually even be a better option than this. It's just I owned a ton of Canon lenses already and losing a reliable autofocus meant I definitely needed a flip out screen, which neither of the Sony's had. I mean, look, honestly, your vlog is only going to be as good as the story that you're able to tell. Sure, there's tons of tools that help make it more cinematic, more interesting, but ultimately it's your story that is going to set your vlogs apart. So now I really want to hear from you. What vlogging cameras are you using? Have you found anything that you really, really like? Is there any gear that you have your eye on? Also, I would absolutely love if you could share this video with anyone who's looking for a vlogging camera or looking to get into the vlogging game. I make new videos about photography, filmmaking, or vlogs every single week. So if you or they want to subscribe, I would love to have you right here. And other than that, I hope this video helped you guys kind of narrow down all the crazy options for vlogging camera. Best of luck to you and your vlogs. Please make sure to send them to me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you want. I really enjoy seeing the videos that you guys are able to create. And as always, I love you guys very much. Stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. Peace. Uh -huh.